the cloud. All right, so as I said, this is our October garden talk, and I'm going to turn it over to Catherine. Just want to make sure we get the right buttons here for her. Uh, I'm going to move right over. Okay, Catherine. Well, good morning um, or afternoon, I guess. Um, I'm Catherine Johnston. I was a home economist for 38 years at Pavilion Central School, and um, I was asked if I would do a, an additional class on this one on squash. And I said to Jan, sure, what do I know about squash? Well, let's just say there's lots and lots of material out there and there's lots of different kinds of squash and different varieties even within those squash. So um, I have a lot of information to pack into uh, the time we have and feel free to send me questions. Um, and you can also call here and they will get a hold of me at any time. I'm gonna be talking about seven different types of squash. I'm gonna talk about storage. I'm gonna talk about different ways to um, cook them. I am not gonna talk about overall canning them. You can freeze most of the ones I talk about but I will not talk about canning any of them just to, to lay the ground uh, directions down. So uh, we can go ahead and start this, which one? This one. <laughs> okay, so what's the difference between winter squash and summer squash? Oops, Oops. you went too far. <laughs> um, winter squash and summer squash, the, the primary difference that they, I read about is the skin. Well, of course. So zucchini has and summer squash have a light thin skin and our buttercup, butternut, our Hubbard squash, they all are in different um, thicknesses of, of the shell. And the other thing that makes it, so the, the summer squash are tend to be tender. They also don't last as long. So with the, the resulting of the skin, you'll find that you can keep your winter squash for months to come so that we can go into our cold winter months and have some warm um, squash recipes. So this one. Okay, so the seven uh, top winter squash that I'm going to be talking about, and these are according to um, different books of what Americans are eating. Butternut is number one. Acorn right behind it is the second. Blue Hubbard is in there, and to be honest, that is actually... A lot of times when you're buying pumpkin, uh, it is actually a squash and it could be a different type of Hubbard squash. Um, pie pumpkin is, is also considered a squash and not to be considered with a jack-o'-lantern, but we'll talk about that when we get to that. Uh, hey, Catherine? Is yeah. Uh, uh, we're just seeing the table. Should we be seeing a PowerPoint or? Yep, you oh, should dear. be. Okay. Okay. Something happened. Uh, I'm going to back right out. Sorry about that, folks. I don't know. We had this working before. Can you see it now, Ray? Sorry, I'm bouncing back and forth from you. Yes, we can see it. All right. I apologize. I apparently had to start sharing again. All right. So we'll just give you that there. Okay. All right. So now you're on the seven, top seven winter squash. So um, like I said, uh, butternut is number one, acorn is number two, blue Hubbard. Um, and we'll talk about each one of these individually as I go. Pumpkin pie. And then we have the delicata squash. Buttercup, not to be confused with butter nuts, and then finally spaghetti squash. And I'll talk a lot about spaghetti squash um, later as we go. Okay, why should we eat winter squash? Winter squash does have a lot of nutritional value. Um, vitamin A is found in almost all squash. Now this is according to the USDA. It was the only site that I found that would divide it down so that you knew where you're exactly getting all the nutrients. Um, the vitamin A is in the butternut, uh, high in the butternut, Hubbard, and pumpkin. And like I said, it is in all of them, but um, some are a lot less, like spaghetti. Um, vitamin C is in the acorn, butternut, Hubbard, and pumpkin. Potassium is in acorn and Hubbard. There is a lot of fiber. And so if you need a fibrous diet, start eating squash. Acorn, butternut, and Hubbard. Magnesium, thiamine, and vitamin B are in acorn, and acorn is also the only one that has iron. 
And uh, they actually said, uh, according to the USDA, that acorn squash is the most nutritional. The ins and outs of squash. I really love this picture of all these different squash. Um, it's on the, starting on the left-hand side is the acorn squash. So it shows you the outside color and what it looks like, but it also shows you how much actual um, meat that you're gonna get on the inside um, or flesh. So, and how many seeds you're going to get. The second one is a, a variation of the blue Hubbard but it is a Hubbard squash. And you can see you're gonna get a lot more seeds, but there is also a lot of flesh in there. The third one is Delicata. And there, I was surprised at how many seeds that were in there and how big they are, um, but it is a fabulous tasting squash. The, the next one is the spaghetti squash. Um, this one shows large seeds, but you'll see the one that I'm doing today has a lot smaller seeds. Um, the, the next one is buttercup and you, or butternut, and you know that the butternut only has seeds at the bottom part. So you have that huge amount of flesh at the top part of a butternut. Buttercup reminded me of a pumpkin um, and it has a lot of seeds in it, but it also has a lot of flesh. So let's start with butternut squash. Butternut squash is of course, oblong pear-shaped squash, tan on the outside, um, and it has a sweet, nutty flavor. It is my favorite type of squash. It's very bright orange um, and therefore it has the vitamin A in it. The taste and texture are somewhat similar to a sweet potato. And according to all the books I've read, you can keep it up to three months. Now this is according to books. I know some of my friends have said, oh, I've kept it all winter. I kept it for six months and we'll get into storage later, but with good conditions, you can keep it longer. I actually already had one spoil on me and I only bought it last week. So talk about how long can it last? So butternut has some variations and the first one is called honey nut. Honey nut is very similar and it has um, like brown streaks that go through it. Um, it it's a lot shorter and smaller. It's a lot, lot sweeter. So re think about that when you're cooking it and when you're using different things um, with the um, for recipes that this one is gonna be even sweeter, okay? So butternut recipes, I've, you, after this is all over, if you want to request her, you'll, set, you'll mail it out. She'll mail it out, Jan will mail out to you um, my list of recipes that I have. And I will be demonstrating the roasted butternut with spinach. Um, I made that at, at an event recently for corporate ex extension. I have to say happily, most of it was gone and I love spinach and butternut together. Of course, most of you have probably just roasted your butternut and put brown sugar and butter on it. Um, and you can see, I like the well, because that's where you can put more butter and more sugar in there. <laughs> Other recipes that are included um, in my packet is a butternut apple crisp. And I will show you that at the end. And also there's a winter squash and black chili recipe. So acorn is number two, it is small, it's round, it's a dull dark green, and it usually has some orange markings. Now, the less orange markings on it, the better, at least for this dark green one. If there are too much orange, it usually means it's tougher and it's very fibrous. We don't want that in the acorn squash. And I can remember picking out one that had more orange thingy, oh, isn't that pretty? Only to be disappointed in the end. So it has a mild uh, nutty flavor. It's perfect for roasting, steaming, sauteing, or microwaving. Um, and it will last only up to one month according to the books. Again, not all things are, if you have a better storage place, good. So variations. These are awesome. The mashed potato uh, squash is pure white. It's so pretty. Um, and it, when you mash it all up, if you roasted it, when you mash it up, it looks like mashed potatoes and you can use it as a substitute. You can also take your regular mashed potatoes and mix it in with this, mash, this squash and just extend the amount of potatoes you have, increasing the nutritional value and also sneaking in a vegetable to your kits. So on the right-hand side is the baked potato squash. I did not see one at the farmer's market this year, nor did I find what at any of the other uh, vendors that I was looking at for the summer. I did find somebody who was selling them, but they were keeping them because they're harder to find, I guess. But a baked potato squash is a darker a brown color or tan color, and they actually supposedly taste like a baked potato. So I'm wondering if it has sour cream with it. What do you think, Jim? <laughs> Okay, some acorn squash recipes. I did not include a um, soup recipe, but acorn squash 
does really, really well with soup. And a lot of times they're actually served in the shell. So um, just as a side thought, um, I, do I did include in my uh, list of recipes an acorn uh, squash with nuts and cranberries. Um, it looks delicious. I haven't made that one. And also a stuffed squash. Um, both of them are highly recommended from friends of mine. Okay. The Blue Hubbard brings back memories. If my sister's on, she'll smile at this one. When we were in a church group, they raised uh, squash one year to raise money for our church. And as uh, we were probably 10 and 11 years old out there picking these Hubbard squash, they were bigger than we were. And we're having to lift them up into this big crate. They were huge. So they're very large, they're very bumpy. And in some ways that you would think they're kind of ugly, but um, somebody delivered one one time to my classroom and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, it was bigger than my oven. I'm thinking, how do I get into it? So articles about getting into your Hubbard squash say, get a saw, get a hatchet. And then one of them, and my favorite one was, throw it on some cement and it will crack into pieces. I, I just suggest that you either put newspaper down or um, a, a, a plastic cloth down so that you don't have a mess all over your steps. But anyways, um, <laughs> I actually was looking forward to getting one of those and then I thought, oh, what am I going to do with all that squash? This one does store up to six months in the correct storage places. Okay, so the Hubbard squash recipes, again, it's really good with soup. Um, and I've included the winter um, squash with black bean chili. Squash bread is also included. And then over on the right is a little pan pie um, that was made with uh, Hubbard squash. Um, and I did not include that recipe, however, but that was something that I had. Um, pumpkin pie and sugar pumpkin is next, and um, this was at uh, a local store, and, but I did find them also at your local farmer's markets and farm stands. Um, you can use your jack-o'-lantern squash, but it's not going to be as sweet, and the difference between the pie pumpkin and sugar pumpkin is they're going to be darker in color, and they usually tend to be the tiny ones. Um, these are, they can be eaten, they're, they're sweeter and tasting, they're bright orange. Um, I love the flesh of them, and I'll, oh, I forgot to bring the extra pumpkin. I was going to show you what it looked like after it was all roasted. Uh, I was given pumpkin to uh, make one of the recipes. Um, pie pumpkins can be steamed, pureed, baked, and uh, made into pasta, which is one of my next projects I'm going to make is a pasta pumpkin, uh, a pumpkin pasta, I guess. Um, and they store for about a month, and the one that we have here is already spoiling. Again, it's in too warm of a temperature, so um, just... When we get to storage, you'll see. So the recipes, your favorite pumpkin pie, you know, you just it takes you a day to make up the, the pumpkin and cook it. And I have to say, I actually just used a potato masher and I mashed it. I have seen that you can actually use your um, KitchenAid at, or your mixer and just mix it up that way and, and um, squash it all down. Um, and I also included a pumpkin squash bread that I'll show you later that I made into muffins. Delicata. I never knew what this was. It's also known as bohemian or sweet potato squash. So you might see different signs in different um, places. They are long, uh, I can't say that word. Cylindrical. Thank you, shaped pale yellow with green stripes. Um, they're very fleshy um, and earthy flavored. The rind is so delicate that you can eat it and they last up to three months. Um, I have to say, don't confuse these with carnival squash, which are shorter, squattier ones, um, which also have the same kind of coloration. Delicata, I've included right here, uh, a one, two, three, very easy roasted. So all you have to do is to preheat the oven to 425, wash your squash, please, ahead of time, cut the ends off, and then uh, cut it half and half lengthwise, scoop out the seeds, and then cut them into little pieces, um, one half inch round, the half moons, or to one inch anywhere along in there. And then you put it on a parchment lined um, baking sheet um, and put a little oil over it, season with salt and, pep salt and pepper, roast until uh, golden brown, or just take your fork and, and test it. They should be um, uh, very soft. It takes about 20 minutes. Buttercup squash. Um, this is a dark green squash with a light green stripe. They have a very rigid, a very distinctive bottom. I'll show it to you at the end. Um, I have this, that particular squash here. Bright orange, uh, drier in uh, the flesh, and is mild in flavor. It's much sweeter than the other squashes also, and they can be stored up to three months. 
the buttercup recipes. The first one is not included in um, my recipes, but you can actually easily look this one up. It's a dump cake, pumpkin harvest crunch. And I actually just had it the other day at election day. Um, somebody was selling it and very good. Um, it is just a cake mix on top of pumpkin that you've uh, already uh, smashed. Um, a stuffed squash recipe is included. And also, of course, the squash bread recipe is included. Spaghetti squash. I have to tell you, until this last week, I hated spaghetti squash. Didn't like the taste of it, but I read an article, which I'll talk about in a minute, of how to cook it in different ways and how I am addicted. Spaghetti squash is uh, aptly named because it looks like spaghetti when you're done. In the upper left-hand corner was my squash that I did, and you can see that when I started taking a fork to it, it really just looks like little strings of spaghetti. Um, it is a great alternative to spaghetti. Um, and you can see in, the, in my sheet here, it only has 31 calories per cup versus 220 calories for pasta. And it only has seven grams of carbohydrates versus 43. And it lasts up to three months. So it's a great substitute for pasta, which I'm going to start using more often. So this was the article, well worth the read. It's by Ann Taylor Pittman. It's, she's from The Kitchen, that TV show. Um, and um, she actually talked about uh, dip seven different ways of how to cook the spaghetti squash. And the best one, if I want to point, and I realize you can't see it, but it's the roasted in half. And it's at a very high temperature, 450 degrees for 35 minutes, um, which you might think, oh, that's a long time. But it, it's, it's so worth doing it that way. It dries it out. It's not mushy. Um, all the rest of the methods, except for the roasted rings, um, I tend to have a moisture problem and they tend to be mushy. So the one with the roasted rings that says, um, you have to cook them in, you have to cut the squash into one inch rings. It's very tedious. So I opted not to do that one. And I'm kind of glad I didn't because it's so much easier just roasting it in a half. So the recipes um, on my picture, that's the first thing I did was I made a spaghetti squash with meatballs and sauce over the top. I have to say, delish. I didn't notice that they weren't pasta. Um, the other recipe I'll be showing you later is chicken Alfredo spaghetti squash. Very, very good, okay? Um, the selection of squash is very important. Now, I gave you all the poor examples. Do not buy any squash that looks like any of the pictures I have. So choose a very heavy size squash. When you pick it up, it should feel heavy for the size. That means that it's mature and it's, it's right. right. Um, avoid any ones that have cut, cuts, punctures, um, anything that has a soft rind, um, anything that is immature. I actually, the one that went bad on me, I must not have felt it very well because I noticed now that there were spots all over it. And so I was very disappointed when I get home. So make sure you have good lighting when you're looking at the squash you're buying. Um, Preparation, you can steam your squash, you can bake it, you can roast it, you can microwave it. Um, if you do microwave, either cut in half or poke some holes in it so that it doesn't explode in your microwave. You can do it in your crock pot or your Instapot and you can grill it. Um, grilling, I haven't tried yet. I know my brother-in-law has and he's had great results. Storage, so this is the important part. Um, Store it whole, not cut. Um, uh, store it in a cool place. So 40 to 50 degrees is the area that what they're looking at. So if your basement's not that cool, find another place. It needs to be dry, so not a moist basement either. Um, so they, they don't like humid areas. The picture with the shelving unit is similar to what I have. I have a shelving unit that has aeration so that the air can circulate um, all the way around. Um, if you're storing it outdoors, make sure there's no danger of frost or make sure that you have at least some kind of coverage that you can put over it. I'd also be concerned in my garage if I have any little vermin coming in my garage and I don't want to attract them. But anyways, the next stop is your roadside stand um, and looking for um, all these different kinds of squash. Two of the squash I didn't talk about is the um, the Turks, uh, Turks Turban. Um, I only found one at all the different places I went, not to say they're not out there. And then the Carnival Squash is at the lower right. And uh, the one on the lower left is Kirari. Is that how you say that? I don't know. It's a red one. I haven't tried that one either. I kind of had to stop at um, so many 
so many that there were out there. So I'm at my half hour almost, so I did really well. So my sources, um, I have a variety of sources. The one I highly recommend is the one that's in um, black lettering. It's the kitchen, best spaghetti squash. I did also, um, I did a lot of reading from all those other ones. I, they were good. Um, the one, if you are a teacher um, or if you have homeschool, the burpee.com has some little classroom activities in it. Um, I thought that was well worth a read for a teacher. I would have used some of those activities in my classroom. The photo sources, I went to Post Farm out in Elba, uh, Squire Farm in Stafford, uh, of the Farmer's Market in Batavia, Topps Market, <laughs> gets to see me all the time. And yes, I have my phone out and taking pictures. Um, and my friend's backyard is the one where the squash is hanging on the fence. So squash can grow pretty much anywhere. And then the few pictures that I couldn't find myself, Pixabay, I had some free images that I used. All right. All right, Catherine. So I'm going to stop sharing so that Catherine can get going and see if there's any questions. And we will see if there's questions. We do. Looks like maybe there's some in the chat. All right. Yes, we will be sending the recipes out. I have everybody's email, so I will do that once um, after the program today. Catherine did mention, okay, Erie County. All right, Rayanne addressed that. So yes, if you need to get a hold of Catherine with a food preservation question, you can call our office. It's the 585-343-3040. Um, you can contact the Master Gardener office and leave a question for her. So that's extension 127. Or you can call me at my extension at 132 and we'll get you in touch with Catherine. All right. So again, I apologize for the PowerPoint not initially showing up. And I think I also said October, not realizing that we are actually in November now. <laughs> so <laughs> where did the year go? All right, so as we, okay, so if you want to um, have a better view of Catherine's, you can go up into the view and hit speaker. And hopefully that will bring you guys up to Catherine. On our screen, we see Rayanne, and I don't know why, but I so guess. I see me. Do you see you? I am over the corner. Yeah, I know it. But if you're at home and you hit speaker view, it should be Catherine. Rayanne, is that what you're seeing if you go to speaker view? I'm seeing Catherine in the table set up, yes. All right, great. Sometimes with all the computers and cameras, I'm not sure what everybody is seeing. So I'm going to turn it back to Catherine. Okay. Do you want the lights? I don't know if that'll, let's just, okay. Yeah. Let's. Be helpful. Like it'll that. be harder for you to see the board. But oh, that's okay. I, I, think it'll be I don't need to that. see myself. <laughs> so the first recipe I'm going to do is a chicken Alfredo spaghetti squash. And as I was talking, all of a sudden I realized I left the chicken at home. <laughs> but at least it's not on the counter. It is in the refrigerator. Um, but uh, I had trouble sleeping last night. So I was up at four o'clock and you'll see what I made at four o'clock this morning. Anyways, so spaghetti squash, I already cut it in half, um, which I was actually very pleasantly surprised that I did that because you didn't want to see me cutting it in half. I had a terrible time. So here's my squash and it still has the seeds in. Take a very heavy duty spoon and I'm just going to scrape this, the seeds right out. And I didn't talk about the seeds, but that's another thing that you can actually you know, save and you can roast the seeds while you're roasting the squash. And I do have some to show you at the end, if I remember. Um, so. so I'll jump here in here with a, a garden comment. If you are growing several different varieties of squash at home and decide to try to save your seeds, you will not get next year from those seeds what you, uh, the squash you took them out from because squash and pumpkins will easily hybridize between each other. So the bees will go from one plant to another and um, the seeds you get will not be, will not come true to see if you try to plant them in the garden. Sometimes it's fun just to see what you do get. So 
could be an interesting experiment. So this, this squash, all that we have to do is put a little oil on it. And unfortunately I didn't bring a brush with me. So I'm just gonna put a little on and then rub it in. And that's all I need to do. And then we're gonna sprinkle it with a little salt and then a little pepper. And in this recipe, they want you to use Italian seasoning, any particular brand, or if you have your own favorite um, herbs that you like to use. So you just do this. Now, I said parchment paper. Well, I'm not wasteful. I don't like buying things and then having to throw it away. So I bought this thing called a splat sheet. It's a Teflon sheet. Um, they have different varieties of it. And all I do is I place it upside down in this put it in my 450 degree oven for 35 minutes. And it's going to come out to my magic kitchen here. Woo, it's all done, it is hot. <laughs> and you can see it's going to come all oh, the way God. out of the shell. It comes out super easy. I was just so impressed with this. And I have to tell you, I actually have some leftovers from last week in my refrigerator. They're still not wet. So it is not a wet. Um, yeah, I think that's what I didn't like about spaghetti squash is it's, it was too wet. So I'll have to say, let's try it one more time and see what you think. Um, Jan's gonna get the benefit of here. So, I'm sorry, there's no chicken. <laughs> that's actually what I want the chicken. <laughs> you, you have got dinner for tonight, Kathy. Yeah. <laughs> And yes, you could actually store the whole thing in your little bowl here. But this is what I wanted this for. <laughs> Jim found her missing tongs here. I was like, yeah, I need some. Okay. So you just scoop it all the rest of the way out. And again, Catherine, how long was that in the oven? It for? was in for 35 minutes. The recipe says 35 to 45. But again, this is a small one. Now, if I guess if you had a ginormous, you know, summer squash, maybe it would take longer. But so far, both of the ones that I've done, 35 minutes has been sufficient. So um, the recipe is from, uh, I think it's from the main Cooperative Extension. Anyways, um, they actually suggested using a canned sauce for the Alfredo. I don't like that. So I found you a recipe and I did include it and it is a low fat, um, and <laughs> as one of the master gardeners was here earlier this morning, low fat is so good. I want all that fat, I want all that cream. Okay, this is made out of cottage cheese, Parmesan cheese and skim milk. And you can see it's still thick and Really, it took a matter of minutes. I put everything in the blender this morning, blended it up and I brought it here and I cooked it for five minutes or more <laughs> by accident. <laughs> Anyways, so I'm just gonna scoop some of this on. So my friend Kim's out there. Kim, I'm making this again. So, and you'll have the chicken. <laughs> So, and the recipe calls for chicken and it says can. I just went to uh, our local store and I bought one of their roasted chickens and then just deboned it um, last night. So, makes it. So they have lots and lots of sauce. So, the calorie count on this sauce was half the amount of a regular one. So, uh, oh, yeah. Because of Master Gardener, we have to have this is my, I'm growing my parsley in the basement. <laughs> So I went down and got that this morning. <laughs> so there's my first recipe. And that one will be included in your, your listing. Okay. Oh. Second up is butternut. Now, again, I pre-did this. So it was this big, okay? And I cut it in half. 
And if I was home, I would cut this, this in half also and roasted it and then scooped out the seeds. Um, since I'm not at home and I don't need this half right now, I'm not going to cut it, but I will roast it later when I get home. So this recipe is, um, where is it? It doesn't matter, I know what I make. Oh, it is my uh, spinach and um, butter, uh, butternut squash recipe. And the really is super easy. Um, the original recipe actually came from a friend and I've altered it just slightly. Her recipe, she used kale. So if you are a kale lover, use kale. Um, the other change that I made in the recipe is I used frozen spinach. Um, just because I always have frozen spinach on hand, I decided make, let's change it so that I can make it even easier. Um, but if I have in the summertime, if I have fresh um, spinach, then that's what I'm going to use. So you're just gonna peel your, your um, butternut and buy yourself a good one of these, that's all I'm saying. It's well worth the extra couple of dollars to buy a good one. And then you're gonna cut these into half inch slices. You cut each one of those into little cubes. Okay, I'm not going to do the whole thing because the magic of television is going to happen. Hold on. So again, take your roasting pan. We're going to put a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan. Swish it around. Then you're going to put your squash in here. And this time you're going to bake it. This one is a 425 degree oven and it's only for 20 minutes. Um, and your squash is going to look like one minute. <laughs> I've Squash all done is going to look at this. You should be able to put your fork, a fork in it and um, be very, very tender. Okay, so then from there, the only thing you have to do is you're going to take your frozen squash. I heated it in the microwave and, oh, I forgot to add my seasoning. So we're going to add a little salt, a little pepper. You had this the other day, right? Yes, I did have it at our meeting. It was very good. And then garlic. That's the only seasoning. And because I like to make sure that both, take, I'm going to add a little garlic to here. So I actually defrosted this in the microwave. And what you would do with this then is after this is all together, you actually roast it for five more minutes. So this one's a very colorful um, for your Thanksgiving table. Now had I roasted the second time, you'd be really smelling that garlic and uh, just ever so flavorful. Oh, lunch. <laughs> so there's, there's my second one, okay? Spaghetti and spinach. And uh, no, it's not spaghetti. No, it's not, sorry. Butternut squash and I'm looking over at my, my right. Butternut squash and spinach, okay? There's the second one. Now, early this morning, when I say early, it was four o'clock this morning. I couldn't sleep. So I decided, why don't I get up and make one of these recipes? So this one is the pumpkin squash bread. And you're all looking at going, but those are muffins. Okay, any bread recipe, quick bread recipe, you can make into muffins. And if it says it makes 12 servings, it makes 12 muffins. It did make 12 muffins. Um, and this is super simple. You're actually semi doing the liquid and the dry ingredients. So this time you're taking your sugar, your oil and your pumpkin puree, which I, this was my 
to look just like this, my sugar pumpkin. I cooked this the day before and I had this all skinned and, and I, I mashed it and everything. And uh, so I had that all cool and ready. And so then it says, I take three fourths a cup of pumpkin and then you add your eggs and sugar and oil and you mix that together. Then you have dry ingredients, highly recommend mix the flour, the baking powder, the baking soda and the cinnamon together um, in the Dever bowl. Don't say, oh, I'll just put it on top and mix it. I highly recommend. Otherwise you get those pockets of baking powder, or baking soda. Um, also, if you're going to add, there's also an option to add raisins or nuts, add them to the flour. It coats them better so they'll go throughout the muffin. And um, so that works out really, really well. Um, the, myself, I like this recipe only calls for a teaspoon of cinnamon. So if you like spice, add some uh, nutmeg, add some more cinnamon. Um, to be honest, if I but thinking clearly in the morning, I probably would have made a cinnamon sugar on top and put them all in it. Wasn't thinking, um, I just wanted something to do rather than lay awake. So um, anyways, but that, that is the, another recipe that's included. And you can also use your leftover squash you know, for, for Thanksgiving for this. My last recipe to show you, this recipe came from Oregon. It is a butternut apple crisp. And um, can you see it? The butternut apple crop, uh, crisp, you actually slice the butternut squash super thin. And I tried to do it as thin as I could. And um, I have to say, I, still for me, and Jan will say too, it wasn't thin enough. So we decided, and you do pre-cook. So you take the, the squash and the apples and you cook the whole, just the, just the squash and the butternut squash, and you cook them for 20 minutes before you even make the topping, and then you cook it for more. But that squash needed more. So I don't know if I was making this again, I might actually maybe microwave some of my slices, do something, steam them, because you'll find that they're still a little crunchy. And I don't know if I could get just a piece of that squash. It's pretty, it's pretty thin. And I mean, it's very thin, but it was still, it was, it, yeah, it's it got a crunch. Like it wasn't, it wasn't done. I was going to put it open, but it was good. I mean, it's a great apple crisp recipe. Yes. And I guess, again, if you want to get your kids to have some more um, vegetables in their diet, there you can see the, <coughs> the, um, the squash. And I tried to do as thin as I could. <coughs> so they have a tickle. So anyways, that's it. So the recipes, they're all included for that too. Any questions? All right, so we've got to love the recipes. <coughs> Looking forward to getting them. She had to leave early. So we've got a small group on. If anybody has a question, they can unmute themselves to ask it of <coughs> Catherine so she stops coughing. <laughs> pepper was the pepper, Catherine. Any questions for Catherine? I know it's a lot of, did you want to show them the squash? Oh, too? I forgot. Oh, yes. So I forgot, but I have. Okay, this is my baby butternut that I, I got. Um, just, it's on the stand. I can kind of say which stand I got it from. There we go. Yeah, go ahead. <coughs> this is in Stafford, I'm Route 5, squares. Uh, two for a dollar, and um, this is the perfect size to um, make this recipe. They actually call for one pound, so it's like, oh, it's one pound. So it's also really great if you're single and you want to have a roasted squash. I mean, super easy, cut it in half and roast it. Um, so that's one of them. This is the, this is the butter nut, and you can see the very distinctive bottom, okay. Um, I can't wait to make something out of this one too. Um, I might make this one. So here's my acorn, which probably all of you have seen acorn. And here is the hot chocolate acorn. Yes, this was new. This one I bought the last day of the farmer's market. Um, and I was just like, really? Like hot chocolate? I said, does it taste like it? And she just said it's sweeter. So I don't know. I can't wait to try this one too. So yeah. Anyways. Any questions yet? All right. Nope, I don't see any. Last call on questions. Hi, it's Rianne. How are you? Good. 
Good. I, I roast a lot of seeds and I never retain the best seeds except for the fact that I love delicata. Do you do you have any viewpoints or I'm roasting them? Yeah, and which ones are better? Some are fibery, some I just toss because I just this was this was my um, pumpkin one that I did, and I did save the seeds for the spaghetti squash this time. This actually might be spaghetti in there too because I was doing both of them the same day. I don't know. I just I washed them first. I had a strainer and I washed them and got out all of the extra um, fiber out of it and um, dried them, and then uh, sprinkled them with salt and a very very little oil and put them on a cookie sheet. And I did do them at a very high temperature, so it was 425, 450 because I had the oven already on. So I thought, oh, I might as well do this. <laughs> so, um, but that's how hot I did it at. Um, then I pulled them out after about 20 minutes and I could kind of smell them. I laid them down to dry a little bit more and I wasn't quite happy with how they looked. So I used my frying, my frying pan and I have a regular frying pan, not nonstick. And I actually just stirred them and got them to finish drying because it just didn't seem to be drying enough. Um, but I also did it on a rainy, wet day. Oh. Yeah, I just I like the delicata flavor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're excellent. For so do you see a difference, Catherine, in the different seeds? Do you have a preference? I don't typically don't do typically it because do it. I don't typically do it just because. What am I going to do with all these seeds? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I eat them instead of a candy bar. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> Ray, and you like the delicata seeds? Then. I do. I do, and they make a really good roasted seed. Okay. That's a good good tip. Yeah. Anybody else have anything they want to offer or share? And I, I do, Catherine was talking about the Hubbard squash. And yes, my mom, we used to, when I was a kid, we had a big garden, a lot of squash, and we did do Hubbard. And I remember her cutting the Hubbard squash open with her jigsaw and also throwing it on the cement floor of the garage to get it to break. So <laughs> Yes, that's got a really tough skin, but that's also why it stores so well. Yeah. Yeah. Does that take longer to cook? Um, no, I don't. Well, once you get into, you got to get into pieces you can stick in the oven. That one that I had in my classroom, it took me forever to get it to big enough, a small enough pieces I could fit it into my oven. Um, and that's, to be honest, the only time I actually baked a Hubbard squash in that section. Now, according to one of the ads in the paper, um, not in Batavia, you can go to Caledonia uh, <laughs> and they actually sell parts of Hubbard's squash. So you can just buy a part. And um, so, I mean, I've never done that, but I thought maybe I'd do that. Cause again, I don't need a whole Hubbard squash unless there's people out there that want to share one and divide it up and <laughs> pay for half of one or something. Yeah. It's about, I mean, when you live alone, what are you going to do with all this squash? So. And I know the other thing, Mike, cause my mom did a lot of squash and she would, um, freeze it is we had a couple of different varieties and she would mix them together. Mm. So that's probably the acorn with the butternut and maybe the hummer. That would get me to like acorn better. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the, the two or three of them mixed together, that's what I grew up with. So, yeah. yeah. And she also used the squash to make her pumpkin pies. So, mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Well, if I don't, I don't see any other questions. So Thank you, Catherine. Thanks to everybody for joining us today. Um, I will put this up on YouTube. I will send out the recipes this afternoon because I have everybody's email. And Catherine will be back in December, now that I know it's November. Um, Catherine will be doing our garden talk in December on her gifts, for, um, gifts from the kitchen. So we look forward to seeing- And one of them will be chocolate. <laughs> we look forward to seeing Catherine again. And uh, we will be starting up Garden Talk in 2022. We're hoping to go back to in-person presentations in March. So um, thanks to everybody for joining us. And you know, I just want to make sure that's a thank you. All right. Yep, a thank you. Okay. So, oh, it looks like, oh, you might be getting some hover there. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Okay. Bye. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye all. All right.